Bonjour, bonsoir, buenos dias, buenas noches. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about Jocelyn's Cabaret. All right, this is the final part of the reunion and we are done. Cause I was really wondering like how long they're gonna drag this. Cause remember in the beginning, they used to drag these to like two, three episodes, but I guess they realized like it's no need. Like <laughs> we we get we don't be wanting to see when they're getting dressed up. We don't be wanting to see when they're putting on their makeup. Like I mean they did a little bit this time around, but they didn't drag it like they've done in the past. Anyway, so uh this we used to in part one, like it was getting crazy with like Daisy and Lucky when they came out. And when Daisy, like, oh, the real Puerto Rican princess, I'm like, girl, you're doing a lot right now. Like, you're really baiting right now. You want them to, to tackle you. <laughs> so, yo, they literally stomped Lucky out. Like, it was Danny, Yummy, and Andrea. And I'm like, yo, like, what is wrong with y'all? Like, they was really doing the most. Holiday and T Love, they was just sitting down, like just sitting pretty. They wasn't really trying to get too involved in anything. Precious, precious, she was also like just kind of chilling out as well. Like, and I feel like that's good. Like, everybody didn't need to get involved in everything. It's like those three is trying to like show and prove like that they have um Jocelyn's back and they're trying to prove their loyalty. Like, y'all really being guestmen's right now, and y'all really like just. Like, how would you like, like, I feel like they're not really thinking and saying, like, if this was me, if I was to go against Johnson in any way, shape, or form, or I have a difference of opinion, this could be me. Like, they're not thinking like that, and that's the sad part about it. So, um, Andrea and Lucky, they went ahead and went at it again. And you can hear Jocelyn in the background egging Andrea on like, yeah, beat that hoe, beat her, beat her. And I'm just like, yo, but like this time around, Andrea actually did come out pretty damn bloody. Like she had a gash, she had blood to come on, come on. <laughs> I'm like, girl, you look like, <laughs> you look terrible. Like you need to go sit down in the corner and pray because you look like you need an exorcism or some shit because you look terrible. Like, go play with your voodoo doll or something because, girl, go go talk to her and see what she could do to revive you and help you out because this ain't it. Like, you really, mm -mm, girl, leave the fight into the others, if anything. It's, I feel like the real fighter out of all of them is pretty much Danny, like, out of Danny, Yummy. Yeah, I mean, Yummy be doing her little, her big ones here and there or whatever, but whatever. Uh, so, Egypt, she was trying to, like, get daisy to realize her wrongs and everything that she was doing and miss natural was definitely kind of like in the background defending her a little something but she ain't go too hard which was good she just said like you shouldn't have been talking crap you know that's pretty much all she was really saying um but she didn't like try to jump her or anything like that which was great so daisy i guess like she started getting crazy once she got back to miami which daisy i mean which Egypt was just like, yo, that's fake because we was okay, you know? We wasn't, like, the best of friends. But after everything happened, like, we was in a much better place. Like, we took selfies together and all that. So, like, where's that weird energy coming from? Which, I mean, anybody would think the same thing. So, in the middle of that whole situation, and let me tell you, I felt so bad. And I felt like this was the definition of doing too much. And I know this girl needs to go and get her head checked out because Danny came across the room and dad kicked that girl in her face and like landed on her neck. Like she could have literally killed her or at least like knocked her out really badly. Like she literally fell down and I'm like, damn, like y'all really, really doing the most. Like y'all act like y'all can't catch a case. Like I don't know if they sign something that says that they can't like, you know, press charges while they're on the show or something like that. If something occurs, which it seems like they probably have because there's been so many instances where I feel like the cops could have definitely got involved or whatever. But we haven't heard of anything happening. But yeah, I definitely feel like, yeah, this was, that was, that was the definition of doing too much. Like coming across the room like that, doing some Mortal Kombat moves on her, that was crazy. But luckily, I mean, Daisy took it like a trooper. <laughs> and she was back at it. Like, she was still 
talking her shit <laughs> even though like that's one of those things where it'd be like yo i'm gonna be talking shit till the day i die like i remember i posted something like that before because it's like at the end of the day like you can't stop me from saying whatever i'm gonna say you know what i mean and like to think that you are that's absolutely insane so i guess that's kind of like what she is but i mean there's a time and place like sometimes you gotta kind of pick your battles and they were kind of out i mean there wasn't super outnumbered because it's only three against two but still it was it was that that was low-key crazy to me um but yeah when daisy she spoke up to jocelyn and then she got mad and wanted her to get off the stage because i guess she just didn't want to hear it and then like a little after that like she was like, oh, get her off the stage before I get her off the stage or I get them to get her off the stage. I'm like, damn, they're like your little bodyguards at this moment or your minions. Like, they do what you can't do because you don't want to go back to jail. So, you know, I, I guess, like, they told Jocelyn to get off the stage or whatever so she could have a moment to shine so she was allowed to speak. And Jocelyn was ghost. Like, she wasn't nowhere to be seen. So I was like, okay, I guess they're just trying to, like make sure Jocelyn don't get into anything with her because they saw they saw what it was leading to with Jocelyn getting up and walking towards her. They're probably like, all right, this is about to get crazy right now. Uh, so after Daisy said what she had to say or whatever about the situation, about everything, then Daisy ended up exiting. But Lucky was able to stay a little bit and, you know, stay on the stage. Daisy didn't really want to leave her. And I'm like, you know what? That's what's up. Like, at this moment, like, she's being a good friend. Because Miss Natural, I remember her saying, like, yo, nobody's ever going to jump you. I'm going to always be here for you because you're my real friend in real life. But she was, like, real calm and serene. I mean, I know, like, like I said, it's a time and place for everything. And also, like, if it's not your battle, then it is what it is. But you said, like, you would be there for her. So it was, a little, it was giving a little fake. You know what I mean? It was giving a little bit, a little bit fake. So, um, next they show like a messy clip of Wet Wet putting, uh, T Love's pictures all around the stores dressed in a Chun Li outfit. So saying that she was a little bill, I'm like, why is she trolling this girl? And T Love was just like over it. Cause she's like, yo, like I'll beat you in real life. And she was like, she's mad fake and she's looking for clout because at the end of the day, like she actually spoke to her for hours talking to her when her father died. And she was like, yo, like, I bossed you up. I gave you a wig and, and, you know, got you right. And, you know, you said that was the best thing that ever happened to you and this and that. And, like, now you're being mad, fake, and weird. So she was, she even called it out by her real name, like, Natasha, like, chill out. <laughs> I'm like, damn, not the government name, no. Damn. <laughs> That's how you know. Um, so, but the ad libs that Jess Hilarious was giving was crazy funny to me. Like, she was just like, oh, okay. Mm. Like, and it's just like the way she does it. It's just like, she's effortless, effortlessly funny. And that's the funny thing about it. So, Precious, she, um, ends up giving all the girls gifts. She had gifts for everybody. I guess it was like some sex thing. And then she gives holiday a gift and when she looks at it it's a clown outfit she said that's what i think about you and here she goes she was just letting everything off her chest saying that she's fake you know that she wanted to eat her do, 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 do all of that to her and she was pretty much begging her and um she still was trying to come back for more after that like she was like I have the receipts in my phone and she was also saying that like during the auditions they did say like if we both get in like we won't be together or whatever and that was already set in stone it wasn't no like you know they just ended up creating that storyline but that's not what it was about initially that's what she was trying to say and she also said that she lied about getting her body done because when Jocelyn asked her like oh are you a BBW she said yes she is and I remember that for real, because I remember I said like to my cousin when me and my cousin was watching, but it was like an episode after that. She was like, oh, like, um, she was like, oh, her body's nice. Like, she was like, it's real. I was like, yeah, she said it's real. She said the only thing she got done was, um, was her boobs. And I think she said something else, maybe her stomach or something. I think she said her boobs and one other thing. I can't remember. 
but come to find out she got the whole bbl so it's like why you can't just say that you know what i mean like the other girl is like yo like at the end of the day like i'll say i got my boobs done my ass done my nose done like you know and that's the difference between some people being able to live in their truth and some people just wanting to live in a lie or they just don't want other people to know their business i guess because they're like i paid my money and if you don't know what my baby pictures look like or my younger former pictures look like then this is how i look now and that's what you go and see and that's what it is so i mean not like i said not everybody's able to live in their truth and just be like this is who i am and this is what it is because they fear judgment they fear being criticized or whatever but it's like dude it's not that serious it's 2023 <laughs> nobody cares at the end of the day just say what it is <laughs> So after being called out multiple times by Precious, Holiday started getting a little roused up, but they didn't get to the point where they was gonna fight. But it seemed like it because they was over here flipping off shoes. And she was like, yo, try to pull what you pulled on on spin with me. She was like, I'm not the one for that because you already know, like you can't run up on me. And I was like, yo, this is real New York City right here. Like, I don't remember where they said it was from. I feel like Queens or something, but I was like, yes. <laughs> You know, New Yorkers always think they bad. We always got to rep and go mad hard and stuff like that. So that was, <laughs> oh, what did, what did uh, Jess say? I think she said, is this like 50 and Jay-Z? I know she said 50, but I don't remember who the other person was. She might have said Jay-Z. So now they bring up the issues with Danny and Miss Natural. But I like the way that Miss Natural handle it. So I guess like, she's just not with the shits i feel like she's just like on a higher level a higher plane she did kind of confirm you know her and this girl was together or whatever together but not together so maybe that's elevating her or maybe she's just trying to be a better person because even when they brought that up she was just like mad chill and she's just like you know this is my little sister right here this is my girl and i have no issues with you and that's that and she just kind of like kept it moving and didn't say really anything about it. Like she just was not with the drama tonight. And I'm like, you know what? She gonna stay pretty. You know, she got her nice dress on, nice little makeup on. She like, I ain't trying to get into all of that. Cause at the end of the day, we already know she got them hands. Like we've seen her fight, <laughs> you know? We've seen Jocelyn actually running from her because she was like a demon, you know what I mean? So. At the end of the day, we know what she's about. We know what she does. And she maybe she's just trying to, like, change her image. She's like, yo, we're all on one accord, one band, one sound. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's real teammate-like. You know, don't turn against your teammates. You always got to be with them, you know, be on it with them. Um, Jocelyn, she said that she wouldn't even fart so that Daisy lucky diamond or raven could smell it she said she wouldn't even throw water on them if they was on fire i've said that about people that i really despise but i said like i wouldn't even spit on you if you if you was on fire that's how you know that you've done something like terrible because if i wouldn't even like spit into me is nasty and disrespectful you know spitting on somebody if i wouldn't even do that to put you out like you know Oh, yeah, you know I don't give a shit about you. <laughs> like, but I don't wish death on nobody, but this, that. But anyway, so, Jocelyn said that, and she said that, um, that, you know, the three girls that's down for her, she said that she would do anything for them. And I think them just hearing that, that's probably putting even more batteries in their back, so they gonna do even worse. But it's like, you can't do all of this out in the real world. Like, y'all go on tour y'all do that big lex shit again or whatever something like that y'all could definitely go to jail you know so they have to really be cognizant of that and like don't just jump because your master says jump like yeah it's good to be loyal but don't be stupid you know what i mean like don't be that hungry for fame that you risk it all you know because then it's like it's not even worth it anymore like what what are you doing like you have nothing you're just gonna have the jail cell and probably some commissary or whatever it's called from jocelyn you know giving y'all a little money while you're in jail to hook you up hopefully you know but yeah so anyway she got all emotional and stuff after the choreographer ended up saying that you know he's been riding with her for 15 years and she manifested this and spoke her visions into reality so she said that she literally birthed birthed it all of them 
And she was like, they need to show her more respect. And she's like, for those females to do stuff like that to her and talk about her like that. And then she was like, for me to have to be back there listening to them talk crazy about me. And she was like, that's wild. You know, I could imagine she was fuming. She's like, at the end of the day, like I gave them an opportunity. Nobody would even know who they are if it wasn't for me. And I do see that. But I think that the thing that she fails to to realize like i feel like yeah the opportunity is great you did some great things you brought people out the hood like you gave people a chance that probably wouldn't get a chance in real life like like wet wet come on <laughs> you know like some of them and and just being in a cabaret like you would think like they have to have certain bodies but she had a vision of i want big small like bodies, no bodies, like just everything, like a mixture. I want it to be like a circus. And I love the fact that she did that and kudos to her for doing that. But I also feel like she also has to show them respect as well because she has this superiority, this like, I don't want to say Napoleon because she's not short, but just like this, this OPP, like defiant disorder, you know, oppositional defiant disorder where she just feels like, or or this God complex. I think that would be a better um, type of thing to say that she may have. Like just where she feels like everybody has to, and she literally said it, like they should be bound down to me and like worshiping me. And I'm like, you shouldn't be worshiping anybody. At the end of the day, like I thank you for what you did to me and or did for me. And I'll continue to thank you and appreciate you. Show my appreciation. Not talk bad about you because that's where they effed up. But she got to remember, like, she disrespects them all the time. Like, she disrespected Lucky several times. Threatened to fight her. Like, and all she wanted to do was be in the cabaret. And I feel like she was kind of, like, over it at that point by the time she finally got into it. So it's like anything that happened that was against something that she stood for she was gonna like pretty much like just she was at her wits end you know she just didn't give a fuck anymore and that's just kind of how it was so i feel like jocelyn also needs to you know not treat these girls like garbage like they're expendable like they're just pieces of shit just because she might have took them out the hood like yeah you did something good for them but you don't got to keep on reminding them where they came from every single day and that you can like throw them back in there and just rubbing it in their face so i feel like it does go both ways but i mean that's just my thought on it you know i'm not i'm not a, a boss of all these types of women so maybe maybe other people might think that this is normal but i personally i treat people like humans you know I see humanity. I see people's souls. I see like who you are for you. And I don't think that people should be treated like that, but that's just my thoughts. So um, they all at the end gave touching stories about Jocelyn and how they helped her and stuff like that, you know, because she was literally bawling. Like she was super emotional during this time. I'm like, well, damn, you know, Janisha had to kind of like flip the energy and say, you know, Everybody appreciates you and let's not focus on the negative. Let's focus on, focus on the people that's here and, you know, the stuff that you've done for them. And let's move forward with them and let's have them say positive things. And that's how the vibe was kind of able to come back to life because it was just so dragging. She's like, you know, I can't believe it. I had to sit here and listen to them talk shit about me, my nigga, my nigga. And I'm like, oh, my God. Every time she says it, it just cringes me out. And it's not even because she's Afro-Latina, because it is what it is. I'm from the hood, and people that's not even Afro-Latina be saying it just because they in the hood and they around black people. But it's just the way she said it. I was just like, it just sounds so cringe. Like, my nigga, my <laughs> But yeah, that was the episode. Let me know what y'all thought about it. This whole thing was, it's always a shit show, but it was interesting though. I can't lie. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all the next one. Laters.